What is going on, everybody? Welcome to a roundtable of Wraith Deck Tech. My name is Jim. Today we are talking Phi Rising Rebellion. My deck, the way I like to build my deck, and why I built it the way I did. So grab a seat and let's jump right in. So we are playing Phi, the Rising Rebellion, and one of the main reasons why I want to be playing this hero is because I like the advantage that the Phoenix Flame cards give us, being able to take a flame out of the graveyard with his ability and add it as a chain link. There's other cards that he comes with in his package that can get Phoenix Flames either out of our deck or out of our graveyard and into the combat chain. And then there are cards that have payoff from having those Phoenix Flames in the combat chain. Yet, a lot of the decks that have had a lot of success with Phi have been more decks that don't do anything fancy and push consistent damage. And so, with my first deck that I took to the Road to Nats in Chicago, it was heavily based on like recurring Phoenix Flames and going for a Phoenix Form turn while still pushing good damage but being a little less consistent than I probably could be. So I wanted to look at what was having success in the current meta, inspect some of the deck lists that have won Road to Nats or placed high, test some of the things that were different, yet I wanted to keep Phoenix form and cards that got back flames in my deck because I feel like that's the reason why I'm playing Fi. I am, I, I, yes, I want to win games. Yes, I want to do well at tournaments. But I want to play Phoenix Form. It would be like playing Katsu without using Lord of Wind. I don't want to do that. I want to go for the cards that are designed to be played with my hero and their high upside cards. And Phoenix Form right now is like Fi's Majestic. So I felt like that's the style that I want to take. So let's jump right in. Now, like I said, my deck is influenced from my own thoughts and ideas, but then what has done well and what have... Uh, what other decks have used and then I looked at those uh, uh, cards and I've tested things out and I've come to this conclusion so quick overview of the equipment I'm running the Searing Ember Blade because again I want to be playing Phi I want Draconic Chain Links um, and the Searing Ember Blade is just cool and right now it's it's I feel like it's a great card um, Flame Scale Furnace for most aggro matchups, I want to have it for blocking. Um, you're not going to get the tunic resource very often in an aggro versus aggro matchup. I'm trying to kill my opponent fast, and they're trying to kill me fast, so I want the block. Um, against matchups that are going to last a little, bit, a little bit longer, the tunic is what we're playing. We have our Mask of Momentum, which is our dex core defining piece of equipment that forces our opponent to interact with us when they do not want to. Uh, we have our Nolrun Gloves, Robe, and Tide Flippers for the Arcane Dealing Classes, Wizard, um, and... Why can't I think of it? Uh, Wizard and Viscerai, the Rune Blades, um, some combination of the Arcane... Uh, I don't know what if it's the right call to, to even need it. A lot of these decks don't run it, but in my local area, there's a ton of Icelander and... Uh, Viscerai and Wizard players and Runebait players, so I'm keeping it in for now. Uh, Stubby Hammers is for the big pop-off turn. It's something you can definitely choose to use um, in aggro versus aggro or when you're just trying to cut somebody down or in general I just think it's a solid option um, for an Art of War Stubby's turn. Um, just set yourself up for that one monster turn, use the Stubby Hammers and you're, uh, you are cruising. Um, Snapdragon Scalers, uh, probably because it's the best option for us at our legs. And then uh, the Tiger Stripe Shuko, which offers a two block blade break, has an excellent ability um, that we use in some matchups where we need to perhaps have more block or we're going against Prism or someone who can prevent damage and we want to take advantage of Shuko's ability. So that's our equipment suite and why we're running it. Let's take a look at the cards. So the top row you can see Belittle, Blaze, Brand, Command and Conquer, and Double Strike. Let's talk about each one really quickly. I love Belittle because it can start a turn if we need it to. Um, most of the time you're going to be able to reveal a three power card in your hand um, to go find a, what I do, Blue Minnowism. 
because resources are things we want. We, we want to be able to pay for the one costed cards in our hand if we have to. We want to be able to pay the two costs for the sword if we have to. And then sometimes um, the way things work out, you might have to pay to fi ability um, just so you can synchronize things a specific way if you need to. So Belittle does so much to go search that blue up and, and fuel our turn. Um, Blaze Headlong is a great card because it's a zero for four go again if you've played a red card that turn. Um, so threatening mask with this is excellent because it's a four and that's a you know that's a breaking point. They got to have a defense reaction or use an equipment and a card or two cards. Um, so Blaze is just excellent value. Brandwood Cinder Claw is awesome because it can make the next attack <laughs> this chain link draconic as well as whatever it is. So you can play a brand with Cinderclaw and then play your Belittle and then that Belittle would become Draconic as well. Command and Conquer is for uh, the Ranger matchup, the Guardian matchup, anybody who highly values their arsenal and can be a six popper going into either Prism or Dromai. Double Strike is a card that I've recently tried out or um, have seen in almost every deck that has had success. And so... Double Strike provides one card, two chain links, two instances of one damage, can be extremely annoying to threaten mask, to pop, or not pop, but hit dragons if you're playing against Dromai, and there's easy ways to buff the damage. This Double Strike pairs so well with Shuko, um, on a Stubby Hammer's turn, Double Strike is insane, Art of War making this a two, go again, and then banish it, and come back in with it, it just offers too much value. Um, Excuse me. In this slot prior, I was playing in flame because I was trying to recur flames back out of my graveyard, and double strike is just a better option to do that. So in flame was a one damage attack action card. If you've played a red card, go get a flame out of your graveyard. Excuse me. I had a smoothie before this, and add it to your hand. And I think double strike is just a better option for that. All right, if we scroll down to the next row of cards, you'll see erase face. Flame Call Awakening, Rise from the Ashes, Phoenix Flame, and Phoenix Form. So Erase Face right now is a card I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I think it's great into the mirror. Like if you play to Fi, Fi is scared of this card. But I also don't want to pay the two to do six damage. Um, it doesn't really fit what I'm trying to do. Like right now it's just like, okay, it's a popper for Dromai uh, or Prism. Um, maybe I'll play this card to use it against... Uh, like Viscerai, then they can't use Mauvern Skies or the Viscerai ability or whatever it may be. But I, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about using it in some matchups, but I, it's a solid option to have in the sideboard. Flame Call Awakening is a must-have because if we play it after a red card, we get to go search for a Phoenix Flame. It can be a starter if we absolutely need it to, and it's a one for three go again. So I want to stick with Rise from the Ashes, because it's a zero, gives the next Draconic or Ninja Attack action card, plus three, and then you get a flame out of your graveyard. I want to be doing things that progress me towards playing Phoenix form uh, to the best of its ability. I want to try to go for the pop-off turn that has the option to try to threaten the three flames in the train chain link, or at least two so that Phoenix form is a five go again. And Rise from the Ashes helps do that. Sometimes you'll see substituted in this slot a Red Lava Vein Loyalty. And if we compare the two, the Red Lava Vein is a 0 for 3 go again. The same is what Rise from the Ashes is because I treat Rise from the Ashes as I play it first, I go and get my flame out of my graveyard, and then I play that flame for a 3 go again. So I, whereas Lava Vein, you have need to have played a red car, or a Draconic card, you need to have like two chain links for it to gain go again. Rise from the Ashes just tutors you that flame, adds it to the chain link, well, puts it in your hand, but then you play it, it into the link, giving it three go again, and it replaces itself. It doesn't block for three like Lava Vein does, but I think the value of this card is better than the value of a Lava Vein loyalty. It can be more flexible, has less requirements, and can buff another attack if it needs it. The Phoenix Flames, we're playing five, so we're running three. Nothing needed to be said there. Phoenix Form is why I want to play this deck, 
Um, it's foolish, perhaps, of me. It's less consistent and not as, you know, in fantasy football, people would say this card has a high ceiling, low floor, um, and I want the pop-off, and I'm excited, and I like the high roll. So I want to play Phoenix form. At worst, it blocks for three. If I have one flame, it's a three go again. Two, it's a five go again. And then three, it's a five go again. On hit, draw three. That's crazy town. Um, and I've actually had that happen before in the in a game at the Road to Nats. So it is possible to do if you play your turn the right way and set this up. Uh, next row, scrolling down, we have Rising Resentment, which presents an interesting on hit for our opponent. Um, if you play it at chain link two or higher at one, it's irrelevant, but it can be a zero for three go again chain link starter if you need it to be. Ronin Renegade is just that, a zero for three go again chain link starter, draconic attack. Take the Tempo is like, in my eyes, a rupture card, but better than all the rupture card options that we have. It's a one for five that blocks for three, and if you've hit three times, then you get to, like, you've hit three times that chain link. When Take the Tempo hits, then you get to go banish the top card of the deck. If it's an attack action card, you banish it, and then you add it. You, you can play it either that turn or your next turn. Um, so it increases your hand size potentially, and that's so valuable, and your opponent's not going to want this to hit. It forces interaction. That's why I love this card. Two of them feels good because I don't want to overcrowd my hand with cards that I need to play later in the chain. Whereas like Phoenix Form is a card I'd want to play later in the chain. Take the Tempo is a card I want to play later in the chain. And then you can see Salt the Wound coming up is a card I want to play later in the chain. Essentially, they're like my rupture cards. Spreading Flames is insane value when you have either blue attacks in your hand um, you're attacking with uh, your Phoenix Flames. It's just buffing so many things. So playing this is like the ideal starter. Um, and if you sequence, you know, Flames the correct way or get Flames back or whatnot, if you have one in Arsenal, like I like to Arsenal Flame a lot, you can get to Chain Link 4 pretty quick. And then your Sword is increased. Then most of your cards after that are increased because... Um, if you swing the sword at chain link four, then you're on five after that. And none of our cards do five except for uh, to, like take the tempo, but that card's not draconic anyway. So spreading flames is insane value. It's the ideal starter and it's awesome. Stoke the flames is a slot that is probably pretty unique to this list. Most people would play Mounting Anger because of what Mounting Anger can provide for the on hit. You can banish a zero cost if it's the first link and then give it plus one and then make one of your zero for threes a zero for four again. However, I feel like that's not a good enough incentive to make somebody want to block and stop Mounting Anger from happening. Most of the time they're going to let it happen and then... And then they'll ad adjust and block later. Whereas if I can play Stoke the Flames, um, you know, Threatening Mask, I will have the option of if Stoke the Flame hits, getting a Phoenix Flame out of my graveyard back into my hand and then drawing a card from Mask and then this card gains go again. So if they want to shut this down, they'll stop my go again. I won't get the Flame back. It's a zero for four. Or it's a one for four, so they're going to have to... You know, use an equipment, a card, two cards, depending on the situation or a defense reaction. And we have ways to, you know, um, I don't want to like boost damage in this deck with Art of Wars and Spreading Flames. And there's, there's various ways that you can get the damage of this card from a four to a five um, or, or whatever it may be. So I think the upside of playing Stoke the Flames is higher than the upside of Mounting Anger. But I know I'm in the minority there. Blocks for three. I like it. Plus, I'm also kind of a dork. I want to play the cards that have the full art. And Stoke the Flame has full art. Flame Call Awakening has full art. Phoenix Form has full art. So I want my deck to look cool too. Um, and that's just the way I am. <laughs> and then uh, looking down in our last two rows, we have Lava Vein Loyalty Blue, which is in there for pitching resources and blocking for three. Um, if we have to play it, 
Uh, we hope it's on a spreading flames turn. Thaw is in there solely for ice matchups or times where we can get uh, frost bites, frost tax, whatever it may be. Cinder skin is a basically in there for pitching and blocking three. Art of War, I don't have to explain Art of War. It's extremely strong, and it's our card that is going to help us pop off and push extra damage through, turning all of our 0 for 3s into 0 for 4s, our 4s into 5s. It's an extremely strong card in Fi, especially when we're extending chain links uh, um, extremely long. So setting up an Art of War and Arsenal and setting up a big pop-off turn with uh, the Stubby Hammers and Art of War um, can almost just win you games by itself. Your opponent's going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to have pushed through so many damage. You're going to be threatening Mask. You've probably got rid of their hand because of how how aggressive or how selected they had to choose when and when not to block. Uh, Salt the Wound I really love because Salt the Wound um, is like a rupture card, except it pitches yellow, blocks for three. So let's compare Salt the Wound to Lava Burst. Lava Burst um, is a rupture card, so it needs to be planed on chain link four or higher. It blocks for three. It's a zero for two, but if you if it is on link four or higher, then the rupture ability is it gets plus three. So you it's a zero for five. Whereas Salt the Wound is a zero for two, but it gains plus one for each attack that hit that combat chain. And so if we're threatening so many attacks on a turn and poking with Phoenix Flames and Double Strikes and whatever it may be, I find myself playing Salt the Wound for like four minimum, five, sometimes six. So it's like a better version of Lava Burst. It does everything Lava Burst does without the Rupture keyword and then pitches for yellow. So for two resources, if you absolutely need to. Um, so that's why I, I favor Salt the Wounds. So um, just kind of scrolling back up here. Again, this is my list that I'm testing. If I was going to an event, I'd be taking this list. Still working out like the ideal sideboard for each character. Still testing matchups. So it's in an extremely um, like fresh and new um, list and take. Um, that I'll be spending like the next two weeks on and, and making adjustments to. But this is kind of like episode one of like, hey, this is like the, the Fi style I want to play. I don't want to um, take away from, you know, the ability to uh, recur Phoenix Flames, use Rise from the Ashes, Flame Call, Phoenix Form, Stoke the Flames, whatever the card may be that that puts Phoenix Flames um, from our graveyard back into our hand and then having that high payoff turn. That's like the whole reason why I want to play Fi in general. Um, so if you have suggestions for me, I'd love to hear them, but I would like to keep that core in. So like the Flame Call, the Rise, the Phoenix Flames, the Phoenix Forms, and the Stokes are all things I'd like to keep in this deck, ideally because that's the style of Fi I want to play. But if you think there are other suggestions, I'd love to hear them as to reasons why you think I'm maybe undervaluing a card or not or not setting myself up the correct way, or maybe you just think everything I said here sounded stupid. <laughs> I'm just a guy trying my best playing a hero that I think is really interesting. Um, as far as like strategy is concerned, um, I think like when I first started to play Fi, I really struggled because I I didn't really understand like how to synchronize my turns the correct way. Um, I wasn't used to, I was playing like a lot of mid range decks in the past and I wasn't comfortable with like, you know, taking damage from opponents and, and then, uh, you know, being like, okay, well, I'm just going to hit you back. And I never really played chain or anything like that. Um, previously. So it took a while for me to adjust, but I think like the, the best advice I could give is like, you know, threaten your mess when you can uh, use and play Phoenix flames when you can, but if you can get one out of your graveyard and it's not going to do anything on that turn, like you're just going to poke with the flame arsenal it, especially if you're running Phoenix forms, because having one in arsenal and two in graveyard, and you come across a Rise from the Ashes in your next hand, well, you're going to have one on the chain link from Rise from the Ashes, you're going to have one from your arsenal, and then one that you can go get with Fi's ability, and if you got a Phoenix Form that turn, then you are in the money. So, arsenaling a Phoenix Flame is really solid. Um, 
I'll try to post some gameplay videos of me playing and testing this deck with my friends and other players. But again, if you have any suggestions, please throw it in the comments below. Thank you for listening. Um, trying my best out here. This is Jim from the Round Table of Wraith talking Fi Rising Rebellion. Signing off.